What is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Today we're talking about one, it's gonna be a review for you guys obviously, and we're talking about one from the house of Benetton. This one is called Colors uh, Womo or Colors for Man. Uh, before we get into it, I just do want to let you guys know, excuse me if you see a dog or hear a dog barking or running around in the background. Um, I did get a new dog. Some of you guys know my older dog, Dolce, passed in November. She was almost 17 and a half years old and uh, took a while because I really wanted a rescue this time around. And uh, yeah, good things come to those who wait. I kept applying. Uh, and in April, the middle of April, I got a dog, um, a half Shih Tzu, half Yorkie, a rescue dog from North Carolina where the owner had a litter and couldn't take care of all of them. Um, she came to me at 2.2 pounds. She's expected to get no bigger than six to eight pounds. Her name's Trisket. She's great. Uh, another small dog really keeping me on my toes, complete opposite of Dolce who is um, obviously ill towards the end. This one is very boisterous and energetic and all that. So um, she might be in the background of this video or be bothering me when I do it. I, I can't, I, she probably won't, but I just wanna let you guys know uh, in case you, yeah, I guess you can't see in this setup anyone running around, but she is there. And if you decide you guys want me to do a little quick video introducing you guys to her or just showing you guys what she looks like, let me know and I'd be happy to do that. Though I'm sure you guys are obviously here for the fragrances, which which I totally understand. All right, so before we talk about this one, we have to talk a little bit about the history. We always do that when it's the first time uh, when I'm reviewing a fragrance from a new house and I've never reviewed this house before Benetton. So this is an Italian fashion house that was founded in 1965 by three brothers one sisters of the Benetton family. The oldest brother, Luciano Benetton, thought there was a trend increasing for colorful clothing and bought a sewing machine and actually sold sweaters off the back of his bicycle. He hustled and they did really well and businesses that do well expanded. And they usually expand much to the chagrin of people like Alexandria or Casio Cortez. Anyway, they opened their first store in 1966 in Belluno, and within three years of that, they had a Paris store. By 1970, they had stores across the world. In the 1980s, they came up with their very famous United Colors of Benetton ad campaign. As of today, they make clothing for children and adults under the brands Benetton, Sicily, and Playlife, and have stores in over 120 countries. Perfumes for Benetton are actually under the Antonio Quig label, and they offer over 60 fragrances. This is the only one that I own and the only one that I'm interested in, to be perfectly honest, unless you guys tell me about something that I'm missing out on. I believe their latest fragrance came out in 2017. Now, I picked this one up off a lonely shelf at TJ Maxx for $10. It was the only fragrance. Um, it, they didn't have many of these. There was one. It's not like when you see sometimes they have like shelves of, you know, um, Beverly Hills Polo Club um, or, na you know, now it seems to be they have a bunch of commodity. They had a bunch of Creed for a while. They had Mugler for a while. You know how it goes there. If you're interested in this one now, you can find it online for $20. So it's not expensive. And the notes are coriander, lavender, green leaves, lemon, bergamot, cyclamen, carnation, fir, cypress, jasmine, rose, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, benzoin, coconut, cedar, and vanilla. Now, when I got this, it's got the colors by Benetton here. The cap was damaged. Uh, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So even though it was in a sealed bottle, this is the way the cap came. And I had to think it didn't, uh, didn't look like that. Normally, you've got a uh, label on the back. I think it's made in Italy. It is made in Italy. So good on them for that. And you have a pretty good sprayer. Um, shoots a good amount of juice, so can't, can't, no complaints there uh, in terms of sprayer. Presentation, though, unfortunately, mine's nicked, so I don't get that full cap, but uh, juice, that really counts. And guys, guess what? This is a really good scent, and 
Definitely one of the best blind buys I've ever made, thankfully. It smells like a scoop of lemon sorbet with a touch of vanilla bean and lavender bud sprinkled over the top. Pretty much a gourmand lemon scent, to be perfectly honest, but with a bit of a refreshing vibe to it, which is nice. There's a little bit more going on uh, that you sort of also get this spicy woody thing happening under the fresh lemon top. It's like a little woody, uh, you get pine, you get some sandalwood, some cedar, and then this spiced element, coriander, carnation. In a way, in a weird way, it reminds me of, uh, of a cross between the original polo green and Chanel Allure Homme Edition Blanche without the creaminess of the lemon. Take out the lemon cream pie, replace it with a lavender lemon sorbet. It's sort of a very fresh and bright and uplifting. Uh, it's this, and underneath that, there's this very classic men's aromatic scent going on. It's very good, surprisingly so. Very fun when you come across a sense like this and you don't have a ton of information and you take a chance and spend a little bit of money and get something with some really nice quality and something different now i have to be honest and tell you it's not the most amazing performer of all time but it certainly is in a slouch uh it's a six to eight hour performer monitor projection not going to choke folks out and you won't struggle to get wafts of it it's an edt through and through and I would say this could be unisex, but certainly to me, it has a pretty classic masculine vibe. And I think it's a scent you'd want to wear uh, in the spring or fall. Great work time scent. Um, the times, the limited times I have worn this, I wear it at work. I think ideally on a nice spring day, business casual, really good scent in that scenario. As far as comparisons go, the best comparison I can give is the one that I made which is um, a Lorome Edition Blanche with some Polo Vintage Green. That's what this smells like to me. Uh, I think I'd also be comfortable in saying that the lemon here does remind me a bit of the Lemon Note and Hany Mori HM, which sort of has that um, nice creamy lemon in it as well. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this scent, I think they'd say that it smells really good, it's versatile, great price, inoffensive, and a decent performer. I think on the flip side, someone would say, this is not gonna please the niche snobs out there, the person that's looking for that next hype, and this is getting harder to find. I will guarantee you, and I could be nuts, in two to three years, this scent will be off the shelves. You can already start to tell it's either been discontinued or distribution has been rolling back on this one. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. I know that seems excessive to you guys, probably, if you haven't smelled this, but this is really solid. Uh, it's almost a year-round scent. It will never embarrass you. It's at a great price point right now. It's not this fancy, artistic, niche scent, and it's not the classic formula of a Fahrenheit or Reef Gauche, but for me, it's really good and original. I just highly enjoy wearing it, and if you can find it for the right price, and I'm sure you can, it's out there, I really recommend giving it a try. Um, and I just think it's so much fun, and it's why I really like um, Chris, uh, who, who does these reviews overseas, because Man, it's so much fun to find these older designer scents that just have so much quality and classiness to them. You know, it's very obvious where niche is going. Niche is going to please the masses. You know, uh, when you have Amouage releasing fragrances like Beach Hot Man, I, I love Amouage, and you have Creed and, and Zerzhoff and Tom Ford's niche brand releasing Flankers, you can sort of see they're trying to one-up the designer brands and that sort of, um, if you will, lust for fragrances that men think will attract the opposite sex. And the creativity and the sort of classic men's aromatic fragrances have fallen by the wayside. And, and I think that's not good. So I feel like to really get what I'm looking for in fragrance, I either have to go the indie route or the, and of course there's some, um, niche fragrance houses still doing what they 
should be doing. And I'm not slagging off any, you know, Zerzhov or AR Mouage or Cree. They still have great fragrances and Zerzhov certainly is releasing amazing fragrances. But I feel like to really look towards that cutting edge, you have to go to indie or these classic designer fragrances. Um, you know, stuff like, you know, I mean, Lalique, Perome, and Aramis 900, and this. I mean, these are sort of the fragrances, the older men's fragrances that I'm really sort of looking towards um, and, and enjoying in these days. I really just sort of like that crispy, old school, woody Shebra, aromatic green fougere. Like, that's just what I'm into um, these days, and that's what I'm gonna try to make someday as I take my sweet time. But um, so much fun in just finding something like this, and I really do enjoy this one. And um, if you check it out, I think some of you guys will really enjoy this one as well. Let me know if there's anything from Benetton you've tried that you have really enjoyed. I would love to hear about it. And if you've ever tried this one, drop me a line as well. Let me know, because I'd love to hear your opinions um, on this one. And of course, I'll see you guys again real soon with more videos. You obviously know what it is, guys. My name is Max. Oh